If you are an architect or an architecture student, you will notice that Photoshop has become part of our daily routine. Photoshop is something that you often have to learn yourself because this software has a vast set of tools to be explored. In this video, I'll share with you 10 essential tips for beginners that will make the process of learning a bit more easier for you. So before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon for notification. So tip number one, quick mask. As architects, we spend a lot of time making selections of humans, trees and textures. This process could take a lot of time if done incorrectly. Here's where this tip comes handy. I have a photo with me in which I want to cut out the kit and add into a render. All you need to do is press Q to open the quick mask and you will see that the layer has turned red. Now with the brush tool B, use a soft brush and just paint over the figure. It does not have to be very accurate. If you made a mistake, you could still erase it with the eraser tool E. Once you've done that, press Q once again and you will see that the selection has happened. You will have to inverse the selection to pick the figure. This can be done by pressing Ctrl I. There you go, now you have the selection and you can move the selection into your desired file. Tip number 2 Selective Color Change If there's an image or a rendering in which you want to change the color of a specific part, you could do that very easily. Go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation and press the small hand icon on the bottom left. Go to the image and click on the color that you want to change. You can now move the hue slider to change any color that you want. Tip number 3 Draw Perfect Straight Lines Do you want to draw perfect straight lines in Photoshop? You can do that by holding down the shift and drawing a line with the brush. This will lock your brush along the horizontal and vertical directions. And what about drawing straight lines along random directions? You can do that by making a dot, move your cursor to the second point, now hold down shift and click to get a straight line. This tip is especially useful while making quick illustrations and concept diagrams in Photoshop. Tip number 4 Remove objects easily you can quite easily erase an object or a person in your image in Photoshop. All you need to do is use any selection tool to select the object that you want to erase. This selection does not need to be perfect. With that, go to Edit, Fill and choose Content Aware Fill in the Contents tab. Mode and Opacity can be default and just press OK. There, your selection has been removed. Tip number 5. Clear out white backgrounds. Images with white backgrounds are always annoying and to erase them off is difficult especially when the images is of trees or plants. Here's a way to efficiently remove the white areas completely. With the tree layer selected, go to channels tab located next to the layers. You will find the channels in multiple colors. Right click on the blue channel and duplicate it. Toggle on the duplicate blue layer and go to image, adjustments, levels. Move the sliders to make the image almost like a black and white silhouette and then press OK. Next, there's a small icon on the bottom right which says Load Channel as Selection. Click on that and restore the visibility of the channels as it was originally. Now, let's get back to the Layers tab and we will have to inverse the selection by pressing Ctrl plus I or right click and select Inverse Selection. Then add a mask in the bottom right corner. That's it. Your image is now neatly cut out and you can move or make copies of the same. Tip number 6. Easy ways to copy layers. Very often, we will have to make copies of layers in Photoshop. There are two easy ways to do that. The first is to select the layer and press Ctrl plus J and a duplicate layer gets created. You can use the same shortcut once again to create another copy. The next and most simple way to duplicate is to hold down Alt and move the layer. You will notice that the layer gets copied. Tip number 
Tip number 7. Randomize your tree brushes. Most of us would have used tree brushes in Photoshop, but one problem with these brushes is that the tree pattern created is always uniform and of same size. This makes our rendering a bit uninteresting and to fix that, we might have to keep changing the sizes of the brush manually on each click. Or not, here's a simple trick to solve the problem. All you need to do is go to Windows, Brush Settings and you will see a tab called Spacing. You can adjust the slider to change the spacing between each tree. You can check and see how this turns out to decide if it's the right for you. The next step, choose Shape Dynamics and adjust Size Jitter and Angle Jitter to alternate the sizes of the brush respectively. There you go, now you can make a variation of the trees quite efficiently. Tip number 8. Isolate a layer. Let's admit that all of our Photoshop files are large in layers and highly messy. It is a better practice to name all your layers while working. Even so, to select a desired layer and work on it can get confusing at times, which is where this tip comes handy. Select a group or layer that you want to work on. Hold down Alt and click on the eye icon next to the layer. This will isolate that specific layer and hides the rest of it. You can now jump in and make the necessary additions on that layer and to go back, all you have to do is hold down Alt and click on the eye icon to restore all the layers back. Tip number 9. Modify a color hue. You can modify the color of leaves on the tree without affecting the color of the tree trunk. To do this, go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. In the Master drop-down tab, select Yellows. Press the Subtract Picker tool and click on the tree trunk. You can now use the slider to adjust the hue of the tree to any color you like. This is especially helpful when rendering a monochromatic illustration or a thematic presentation. And the last tip, tip number 10, adding depth. If you haven't heard of the dodge and burn tool, you are definitely missing out. The dodge and burn tools are located above the text button by default. And these tools can take your renderings to the next level. Now let's see what each of these tools does. The dodge tool highlights specific areas as you brush on the image. And the burn tool darkens the same areas. You also have drop down tabs to change the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can also adjust the exposure percentage. With the mix of these two tools, you can add depth and direction to your renderings, which might have come out flat or if you're running out of time to make that perfect rendering settings. Let me give you an example with this rendering, which appears a bit flat. I'm using the burn tool to darken the corners of the walls, cushions of the sofa, also the TV and TV paneling. I'll then switch to the dodge tool and highlight spaces which have light sources falling on. The cove lights, TV backlights and some walls and floors. There you go, notice the difference made in the renders, just under a minute. I hope this video was helpful and if it was, please hit that like button and share this with someone who would find it useful. And if you have any such tips that you want to share, please write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.